Freemasonry has uh, infiltrated uh, many of our churches, many of our members, pastors, elders uh, have gotten involved in the Masonic Lodge thinking it's simply a benevolent organization or a fraternal organization. And they don't realize that its basic teachings and rituals are contrary to God's Word, the Bible. Uh, I became a Master Mason, a 32nd degree Mason, a member of the Shriners. I was a member of two Masonic Lodges. I served as principal officer in one of those lodges. I was about to be elected Worshipful Master before I left. And I received a very rare credential called the Proficiency Card, which authorized me to instruct other Masons in Masonic ritual. It literally requires a man to have committed to memory all of the rituals of Blue Lodge Freemasonry all of the positions and that's what I could do so I know what Freemasonry teaches because I taught it myself the Masonic Lodge uh, claims in its very own writings to be a religion that every Mason is a minister of this religion and uh, when you get involved in the Masonic Lodge uh, I mean Every Mason who is watching this program knows that in the very first initiation, in order to join what is called the Blue Lodge, uh, every Mason will go through an initiation where he is uh, brought before an altar, and he will bow at that altar, and before, behind that altar stands a man he calls the Worshipful Master of the Lodge. And as he's bowing at this altar, he says, I'm lost in darkness and I need the light of Freemasonry. And then every Mason is required to take a blood oath of allegiance where he is sworn to secrecy and every Mason will put his thumb to his throat and will swear a blood, blood oath not to reveal the secrets of Masonry or he'll have his throat cut from ear to ear. America was founded by Freemasons. And the ideology of Freemasonry is enshrined in the U.S. Constitution. For example, the Establishment Clause, where the government won't respect any religion. That's a denial of the social kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so America lives the religion of Freemasonry. That's why Masonry is not deemed to be a threat. The basis of Freemasonry, which all Masons go through, is the Blue Lodge. The Blue Lodge being the first three degrees or levels of Freemasonry. Entered Apprentice, the first degree, Fellow Craft, the second degree, and Master Mason, the third degree. Most Masons never go beyond third degree. Although if one chooses to go beyond the Blue Lodge, there are two routes that can be taken. One is the York Rite, and one is the Scottish Rite. Most Masons never go beyond third degree. Dr. Carlson, how in the world could any person who really understands Christianity make a statement that I am in darkness and I need light? Well, if you read 1 John chapter 1, it says that if you are a Christian and claim you're in darkness, it says the truth is not in you and you are living a lie. And it was in fact United States Supreme Court justices who created the doctrine of separation of church and state in the United States. Under Presidents Roosevelt, Truman, and Eisenhower, all of whom were Freemasons, they appointed in collectively 12 Supreme Court justices, all of whom were Masons, and from 1941 to 1971, Masons dominated the Supreme Court, and through those judicial decisions created the Masonic doctrine of separation of church and state. You gotta understand, okay? Satan is not an idiot. To many people, the very word Freemasonry evokes a sense of mystery, secret society, and so on. But in order to find out what they're all about, we need to know a little history. There were many humanist thinkers back in the 1500s who saw the corruption that there was in the church of the day, and they concluded that in order to get rid of that corruption, there would have to be a new world order. They had read Plato's Republic. Plato's Republic in the 1500s was now a popular work, and Plato too was a Greek philosopher living in the 5th century BC, and he too was totally fed up with the corruption that there was in government. He said, um, if we could have a group of wise men who were well paid to rule over the people, then there would be no corruption. 
It's a nice thought, but a rather naive one. We've seen such governments today and they are totally corrupt. But nevertheless, there are still people today, many people, who think that it is a good idea. This then was the agenda for the humanist thinkers back in the 1500s. But in order to do that, they had to first destroy the existing world order. The existing world order based upon the rules of God through the king and through the church. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. They would have to be a new world order. And then how could any Christian, and this is what disturbs me so deeply, is that we have Christian men who join the lodge, they bow at an altar before, they, before a man they call the worshipful master. You know, Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. And every man out there has to decide, are you going to follow the worshipful master of the lodge or follow the only worshipful master, Jesus Christ? You cannot serve two masters. Ultimately, this is a question of God versus Satan. Most Masons go into masonry uh, viewing it simply as a fraternal organization, uh, kind of an advanced Boy Scouts because their father or grandfather was involved in masonry. And they get into it uh, naively, not realizing that it is a religious organization designed for very specific spiritual purposes. Masons generally claim that their craft arose out of the uh, operative Freemasons who used to build the physical structures, the cathedrals in Europe. But during the Enlightenment period, and this was a period during which there was a movement of free men from ecclesiastical authority and supernatural revelation, there was a movement to invite others into Freemasonry, bankers, lawyers, merchants, etc. And that's called speculative Freemasonry. So Freemasonry practiced today is ultimately a spiritual organization because just as the operative masons used to build the physical structures today's freemasons seek to build the, the spiritual structure are you an american absolutely okay um, you're living in a country that is moving past your point of view at an amazing rate of speed today's freemasons seek to build the, the spiritual structure And then to take a pagan blood oath, which James chapter 5 says is an abomination to God. To take a blood oath to have your throat cut from ear to ear, your bowels ripped open. That's just the first of many oaths as you go along in your degrees right. in masonry. Today's Freemasons seek to build the, the spiritual structure. The ritual and theology of Freemasonry really originates from um, Egyptian paganism. And the reason for this is that, as we find, in 1717, the rituals and theology were formalized and brought together and formed the Grand Lodge in England. Uh, the reason being that there were a great many lodges throughout England and throughout Europe at that time. They all had slightly different practices. These practices had originated from the origins of the speculative masons, which of course was Rosicrucianism. The Rosicrucians uh, believed in the Hermetic and Egyptian traditions, and as we'll find in, uh, within Freemasonry, we find Osiris, Adonis, and Isis mentioned quite frequently. So of course these are the Egyptian pagan symbols, pagan gods. After you go through the first three degrees of what is called the Blue Lodge, uh, Masons are then allowed to go into either the Scottish Rite or the York Rite, uh, <clears throat> 30 second degrees in the Scottish Rite or 13 in the York Rite. And there they go through a progression of rituals and degree work where they give worship and honor to Egyptian gods, mm. Persian gods, Greek gods, Babylonian gods. And at its very heart, and you can read the authorities of Freemasonry. Read Albert Mackey, Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, History of Freemasonry. Read Albert Pike, his Morals and Dogma. Uh, the authority, so authoritative, he's the only man buried in the Masonic Lodge in Washington, D.C. And they will tell you that Masonry is a religion. And they claim to be the revival 
of the ancient, ancient mystery religions of Babylon and Persia and Egypt. In the first degree, the candidate for Freemasonry was required to strip down, take all his clothes off except his underwear, but that's not all. He's also required to remove his crucifix, his scapular, even his wedding ring. They want the man vulnerable. They do not want him to have a spiritual offense. Also, a noose is placed around the man's neck, and this noose symbolizes his, his attachment to the profane world, his former religion. You will see that that noose is removed when he finally enters into the covenant with Freemasonry. What these Babylonian cults were, were fertility cults, right. where they worship the male organ. And this is why, for example, when a mason goes into the lodge, every mason is receives this white lambskin apron, and they will wear this as a covering, because when you get into masonry, uh, they say that uh, no woman can be a mason, and that is because she does not have what they call the generating principle of life, the male organ. Today's Freemasons seek to build the, the spiritual structure. A blindfold is also placed on his eyes, and he is declared to be in a state of spiritual darkness. They said, this is Mr. John Salza, who has long been in darkness and now seeks to be brought to light. Well, I only had the blindfold on for a couple minutes. They were obviously talking about the fact that even though I was baptized into the light of Jesus Christ, I was in a state of spiritual darkness. And then when the man comes into the lodge, he's received on the point of a sharp instrument piercing his naked left breast and they say that as this is an instrument of torture to your flesh so should the recollection of it be to your conscience should you ever violate your secrets in Freemasonry. Who has long been in darkness and now seeks to be brought to light. Lucifer son of the morning I'm gonna chase you out of earth. And they say that uh, it is through the male organ that man achieves immortality and eternity through his generating uh, his offspring. And all of this is found in their own writings. It is a pagan, non-Christian cult. This is an intimidation tactic that's used even in satanic rituals. Freemasonry sets the tone early right away that this is a secret organization. And they say that uh, it is through the male organ that man achieves immortality and eternity. Crowley taught that by accessing alternate universes through sodomy, especially of young boys, you can use that energy through this child to live forever. This is a deception. Crowley, it was the first commune of people living together who were artists, and maybe they were having sex parties too? It's possible. <laughs> but of course they were, since they made a religion of, of uh, eros, so it's frivolous to call them parties. In Freemasonry, they say that all religions are the same. It doesn't matter which religion you are. And uh, they say Jesus, Buddha, Confucius, Muhammad, the name means little. What did Jesus say? Yeah. I am the way. I Absolutely. am the truth. I am the life. There's no other way of the Father but by me. Peter said there's no other name under heaven by which you can be saved. How can you profess to be a Christian and turn around and, and buy that? <laughs>